Crossbow was the code name of the World War II campaign of Anglo-American operations against all phases of the German long-range weapons program. It included operations against research and development of the weapons, their manufacture, transportation and their launching sites, and against missiles in flight. The original 1943 code name Bodyline was replaced with Crossbow on November 15, 1943. Post-war, crossbow operations became known as Operation Crossbow as early as 1962, particularly following the 1965 film of the same name. Topic: <laughs> Strategic bombing. In May 1943 Allied surveillance observed the construction of the first of eleven large sites in northern France for secret German weapons, including six for the V-2 rocket. In November it discovered the first of 96 «ski sites» for the V-1 flying bomb. Officials debated the extent of the German weapons danger, some viewed the sites as decoys to divert Allied bombers, while others feared chemical or biological warheads. When reconnaissance and intelligence information regarding the V-2 became convincing, the War Cabinet Defense Committee operations directed the campaign's first planned raid the Operation Hydra attack of Peenemünde in August 1943. Following Operation Hydra, a few crossbow attacks were conducted on the heavy crossbow. Bunkers of Watton V-2 and Mamoyek V-3 through November. Crossbow operations against ski sites began on December 5 with the Noball code name used for the targets, e.g., Noball 27 was the Ailey Le Vieux Clocker site. Noball No. 93 was in the Cherbourg area. Noball No. 107 was at Grand Park, and Noball V-1 Site No. 147 was at Leidscourt. The U.S. formed its own crossbow committee under General Stephen Henry New Developments Division on December 29, 1943, and the U.S. subsequently developed bombing techniques for ski sites in February, March 1944 at the Air Corps Proving Ground a June plan to attack V-1 launch sites from aircraft carriers with USMC fighters was disapproved. V-2 facilities were also bombed in 1944, including smaller facilities such as V-2 storage depots and liquid oxygen plants, such as the Mary Sir Was V-2 storage depot on August 4, 1944 and, by the 8th Air Force, which bombed five cryogenic LOX plants in Belgium on August 25, 1944 and aborted the next day, to hit liquid oxygen plants at La Louvière. Tort and Willebroke, Belgium. Due to clouds. Topic: <inaudible> Bombing priority. At the request of the British War Cabinet, on April 19, 1944, Dwight Eisenhower directed crossbow attacks to have absolute priority over all other air operations, including wearing down German industry and morale for the time being, which he confirmed after the V-1 assault began on the night of June 12, 13, 1944. With respect to crossbow targets, these targets are to take first priority over everything except the urgent requirements of the overlord battle, this priority to obtain until we can be certain that we have definitely gotten the upper hand of this particular business." Eisenhower to Arthur Tedder, June 16. The launches surprised the Allies, who had believed that the earlier attacks on the sites had eliminated the danger. 
the British, who had not expected German bombing of Britain to resume so late in the war, were especially upset. Some suggested using gas on the launch sites, or even executing German civilians as punishment. Karl Spatz, commander of U.S. Strategic Air Forces in Europe, USTTAF, responded on June 28 to complain that Crossbow was a diversion from the main task of wearing down the Luftwaffe and bombing German industry for the combined bomber offensive, and to recommend instead that Crossbow be a secondary priority since, "...days of bad weather over Germany's industrial targets would still allow enough weight of attack for the rocket sites and the lesser tactical crises." By July 10, Tedder had published a list of crossbow targets which assigned 30 to RAF Bomber Command, 6 to Tedder's Tactical Forces, and 68 to Spatz USSTAF, after which Spatz again complained, so Eisenhower allowed spare bombing of non-crossbow targets. Instructions for continuing to make crossbow targets our first priority must stand, but when the entire strategic forces cannot be used against crossbow, we should attack a aircraft industry, b oil, c ball bearing, German, Kugellagerwerk, d vehicular production. Eisenhower, July 18. Nonetheless, over a quarter of the combined bomber offensive's tonnage of bombs were used against V weapon sites in July and August. Many of the attacks were ineffective, as they were against unused sites rather than the launchers themselves. Spatz unsuccessfully proposed that attacks concentrate on the Calais electrical grid, and on gyro compass factories in Germany and V weapon storage depots in France. The gyro compass attacks, along with targeting liquid oxygen tanks, which the Allies knew the V 2 needed, might have been very effective against the missiles. On August 25, 1944, the Joint Crossbow Target Priorities Committee established July 21 prepared the plan for attack on the German rocket organization when rocket attacks commence. In addition to bombing of storage, liquid oxygen, and launch sites, the plan included aerial reconnaissance operations. Following the last V-1 launch from France on September 1, 1944, and since the expected V-2 attacks had not begun, crossbow bombing was suspended on September 3 and the campaign against German oil facilities became the highest priority. The V-1 threat from occupied France ended on September 5, 1944, when elements of the 7th Canadian Reconnaissance Regiment and the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division contained the German military units of the Nord-Pas-de-Calais area with their surrender following on September 30. <laughs> Resumption of bombing Crossbow bombing resumed after the first V-2 attack and included a large September 17 raid on Dutch targets suspected as bases for Heinkelhe 111s, which were air-launching V-1s. Modified V-1s 865 total were air-launched from September 16, 1944 to January 14, 1945. The British had initially considered that an earlier July 18–21, 1944 effort of 50 air-launched V-1s had been «ground-launched» from the Low Countries, particularly near Ostend. In addition to air-launched V-1s, launches were from ramps built in the province of South Holland, the Netherlands in 1945. Allied reconnaissance detected two sites at Vlardingen and Wipenberg, and along with a third at Delft, they launched 274 volts minus ones at London from March 3 to 29. 
only 125 reached the British defences, and only 13 of those reached the target area. Three additional sites directed their fire on Antwerp. After using medium bombers against V-2 launch site in the Hags Boss on March 3, the RAF attacked the Holland V-1 sites with two squadrons. An RAF fighter command unit used Spitfires against Wipenberg on March 20 and 23, while a second tactical air force unit used Typhoons against Vlardingen on March 23. Counterattacks on Holland's V-1 and V-2 sites ended on April 3, and all crossbow countermeasures ended on May 2 with the end of World War II in Europe. Topic. V-1 defense On January 2, 1944, Radek Hill submitted his plan to deploy 1,332 guns for the air defence of London, Bristol and the Solent against the V-1 robot blitz. The Diver Operations Room was located at RAF Biggin Hill. Against V-1s that had not run out of fuel or veered off course the British deployed select units of Fighter Command No. 150 Wing RAF operating high-speed fighters, the anti-aircraft guns of Anti-Aircraft Command, and approximately 1,750 barrage balloons of Balloon Command around London. Flabby was the code name for medium weather conditions when fighters were allowed to chase flying bombs over the gun belt to the balloon line, and during Operation Totter, the Royal Observer Corps fired snowflake, illuminating rocket flares from the ground to identify V-1 flying bombs to RAF fighters. After the robot blitz began on the night of June 12, 13, 1944, and RAF fighter first intercepted a V-1 on June 14, 15. Moreover, anti-aircraft guns increased the rate of downed V-1s to 1 per 77 rounds fired after the first few weeks of proximity fuse operation. Reginald Victor Jones. By June 27, over 100,000 houses had been damaged or destroyed by the V-1 and shattered sewage systems threatened serious epidemics unless fixed by winter. Of the 638 air-launched V-1s that had been observed e.g., by the Royal Observer Corps, guns and fighters downed 403 and the remainder fell in the London Civil Defence Region 66, at Manchester 1, or elsewhere 168, including Southampton on July 7. Additionally, the gunners on with CDR. S. G. Birch's Lancaster claimed they downed a V-1 over the target area on a March 3, 1945, raid on the Ladbergen Aqueduct. V-2 countermeasures The Body Line Scientific Committee 19 members, including Duncan Sandys, Edward Victor Appleton, John Cockcroft, Robert Watson Watt was formed in September 1943 regarding the suspected V-2 rocket, and after the 1944 crash of a test V-2 in Sweden, transmitters to jam the guidance system of the rocket were prepared. A British sound ranging system provided trajectory data from which the general launching area could be determined. And the microphones in East Kent reported the times of the first V 2 strikes on September 8, 1944, 18 hours 40 minutes and 52 seconds, and 18 hours 41 minutes and 8 seconds. On March 21, 1945, the plan for the engagement of long-range rockets with double-A gunfire 
which called for anti-aircraft units to fire into a radar-predicted airspace to intercept the V-2 was ready, but the plan was not used due to the danger of shells falling on Greater London. Happenstance instances of Allied aircraft engaging launched V-2 rockets include the following. On October 29, 1944, Lieutenants Donald A. Schultz and Charles M. Crane in a P-38 Lightning attempted to photograph a launched V-2 above the trees near the River Rhine. On January 1, 1945, a fourth fighter group pilot aloft over the northern flight path for attacking elements of five German fighter wings on Unternehmen Bodenplatte that day, observed a V-2 act up for firing near Lokem. The rocket was immediately tilted from 85 DEG, to 30 DEG. On February 14, 1945, a No. 602 Squadron RAF Spitfire 16 pilot, Raymond Baxter's colleague Cupid Love, fired at a V-2 just after launch, after the last combat V-2 launch on March 27, 1945, the British discontinued their use of radar in the defence region to detect V-2 launches on April 13. Topic. Named activities Bodyline Joint Staff Committee Diver, a secret British defence instruction specified the code name, "...enemy flying bombs will be referred to or known as diver aircraft or pilotless planes." to alert defenses of an imminent attack often called Operation Diver, particularly post-war, without citation. Flying Bomb Counter Measures Committee Duncan Sandys, Chairman Fuel Panel of the Special Scientific Committee Sir Frank Smith, Chairman Questionnaire To establish the practicability of the German long-range rocket by Frederick Lindemann, 1st Viscount Cherwell. Notes <laughs>